couple things I want to throw at you real quick. Huh? Yeah, so sit still. Let me throw this at you. Uh, I don't know, this is just an assignment. So guys, this is sort of a review, but I'm going to build it up into uh, a relationship with section 310. Find BYDX. Of course, what do you got to use? Replace everything. Sure. I'll say it like that for right now. Do it. So compared to that quiz, it shouldn't be too evil. What do you guys get here? One. One. Two. 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 Equals divide by this mess, right? One over. All right, now, now, now stay with me now. There's a reason I'm doing this, and it's sort of related to, like I said, 310. Uh, what's dx dy? We never looked at that, but you guys understand variables don't mean shit, they're just placeholders. So y isn't special, x isn't special, we just kind of pick them to be the normal things we use. So I can do dx dy all day. What does that mean, though? Yeah, so look at how... Why is it so much better to do dx dy here? Because there's dx dy. Equals, now this side I'm doing with respect to y. So what's the root of this respect to y? To y, because it would be dy dy. And just like we don't write dx dx, I'm not going to write that shit either, because it's just 1. So it's going to be equal to 2y. 3, 3, 2, So if I want dy dx instead, I just have to... Flip it, holy shit! Oh. One over that. Crazy. Isn't that insane? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, I know this is going to be like a review question that I didn't get, but couldn't you take the 3y over and put dy? It would just be 3 dy over dx times e. You can take the derivative of e or no. I, I'm not because, sure I follow. Because y is variable. So what's happening? I'm sorry. So I was, I was thinking, there's, I, I thought I remember. With this guy? Yeah, could you right. take the 3y, put it down, and make 3dy over dx, and it would be e times 3dy over dx. No, uh, are you talking about taking this down? Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it, logarithms have that property, not exponentials. Yeah, yeah. Logarithms, if it was a uh, natural log of, of uh, x to the. Or even, even here, if it was log base, who cares, log base 10 of e to the 3y, how could I rewrite that? Well, you can 3y is exactly. log. Exactly, there's logarithms that have the property. There's only logarithms that have the property. Okay. Yeah. All right. You guys get part of my point there? Very interesting. And, and will this ever be directly useful? Maybe not. But but what's most useful is it? Uh, 
Yeah, I think you're going where I'm going. Um, and, and, and just to make my point even better, so that was a shortcut to this, your textbook method. How would I do uh, related rates? What would it be? Related rates, so it would be dx dt. I'm going to start dx dt equals? 2y, 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 
is to do another example like what I tried to do last time real quick. Let's just take another function here. Let's see. Let's take a function out of here. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Is this 311? 310. Yeah. 311 is hyperbolic trig functions. So you'll know when we're there. Uh, let's see. Okay, good. Perfect. <laughs> um, so what about this guy? And I want to figure out uh, an approximating linear function. I want to approximate this with a linear function. I want it to make sense that it should work. Because any continuous and differentiable function, if you zoom in on it far enough, it becomes linear. Mm. So it kind of intuitively makes sense that a line, a straight line, the tangent at any point, should approximate this decently well within so much of an x. And you know, it, it does sound a lot like delta. We're not going to suddenly do proofs. Don't freak out. We're just going to do it all visually right, on the calculator. So first thing is, do you remember the approximating f, it was, was it f prime of x? x minus two. Yeah. One. Yeah. Well, you want the slope at a. a. Exactly, which is really just y equals m x minus x1 plus y1. So it's so easy to remember this formula. So I don't know if you're picking up the fact that you must remember this formula <laughs> for the test. I'm not going to give it to you. Uh, so to approximate this, what do I need? Right? Now I know what I need. I need to know what f prime of x is, so I can figure out what f prime of a is, and I also need to tell you what the hell a is. So let's let a be 0. So I'm curious about natural log of 1 plus x in the and input of 0. And it works here because I've done this shift. I couldn't use zero for that guy because it doesn't have a derivative at zero. Don't even have a function value at zero. So what is f prime of x? Yeah. Yeah. So what's f prime of zero? Say one. One. Kick ass. And I just got to plug stuff in. And of course, what's f at a, which is f of zero? One. What is that line of one? Zero. zero, there it is. So that means that natural log of 1 plus x is approximately the slope, 1, times x minus a, and what's a? Zero. So all of this becomes that, because the slope is 1 at that point. The function value is 0 is coming up. Uh, a is 0. And then that is zero, like we just said. So this is approximated by just x. That's crazy. Close to zero, right? So before we jump into the calculator, let's try a couple of things out here. Um, let's test this a little bit. So give me an x value near zero. You've got to understand what this near means. One is very far away from zero. There you go, point one. So then what is, uh, let's do the approximation first. The approximation is that this should be approximately 0 0.1. Let me stop there, you guys with me on that? Because the approximation says the natural log of this is approximately what you plugged in. And you told me to plug in 0 0.1. So somebody help me out, what is ln at 1.1? Yeah, so this is actually 0 0.0953, which is, for me, it's really close to that, right? It's pretty decently close. All right, let me stop there for a second. Now, now they actually do talk about Taylor polynomials. You don't have to look at that. That's not so much semester. If you're not taking Cal 2, you don't have to worry about them at all. But to me, they're one of some of the most fascinating things, because you can take any function you want, and right now we're approximating a function with a line, right? We're just a linear function. But does it make sense that if I allow for higher powers, my approximation should get better and better and better? Maybe, maybe. Are you so saying I mean, instead of approximating with a line, you'd be approximating with a 
Okay. Yeah, so uh, uh, ln looks like that, right? So if I approximate with a straight line, you can tell that sucks, but a parabola, immediately you can ah. see a parabola could probably hug it for a lot longer. And a cube could do even better, and a fourth power could do even better. So the, the more powers you bring into this, so there's you can put other things that are related to f double prime and f triple prime. You can do other terms that just keep making your approximation better and better. So a whole other level of this would be how far out, how many derivatives do I need to use to be within so much for values within so much? I mean, that's the and then you'd step. use a series or something. Exactly. So let's, let's pull it back. Pull it back, Jeff. Pull it back. Series and sequences. Series and sequences. Yeah. Most of you guys have heard bad things, and to me, they're the most awesome stuff. And you're like, yeah, Jeff, we've already learned to write off what you think. So, I don't point you too much, but I'll... the guy can dream. So let's try this one more time. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our approximation. And we're going to say, how close did we get here? So it's like 0. 0.047 roughly. So within, within like 0. Uh, what did you just say, Jeff? You could do it. 005? Yeah. We're, we're within 0.005. I mean, is everybody cool with, with what I just said? The answer is actually 0.100, and we got 0 0.095, so we're within 0 0.005 of the actual answer. And how far did I get away from? My input was 0.1 away from the center. All right, I like it. So what I'm curious about is, what if I had, oh, I need to know how far are we going to go and be within 0.001? So here's how you do that. So what I want is I want the distance between my approximation and the function. I want that distance to be less than yeah, I'm fine. Less than 0 0.001. All right. So obviously I can't get I can't go out to point 0.1. That would be too far away. Because then my approximation is already five times as big as my error tolerance is. All right. Any of you guys, future engineers possibly? Error tolerance is going to be ruling your life in, in, a, in a few years, hopefully. If everything goes as, as planned. Um, so let me see if you guys are cool with this. Uh, you should know how to deal with, with uh, inequalities. I'll make that like that. Right? If you have a less than, you can build it like that. Are you guys with me? Ooh, there. That's better. Cool. Otherwise, the middle would be 0 0.001. Exactly. Thank you. There's sort of like a squeeze thing going on, but let's not squeeze. Um, so to me, I, whenever I teach this first to my algebra students, I teach it like a uh, stay close to me. We're getting going into a haunted building or something. Stay close to me. So here I am. I don't want you to be further than this away from me. All right, so it makes a sandwich. The other one is the restraining order. Stay the hell away from me. So it was greater than. So now I can add this to all sides. So I get this, the actual output minus 0 0.001, and the actual output plus 0 0.001. I want my approximation to live in there. Is that going back to the epsilon and all Not directly. Have I brought that in yet? <laughs> and in fact, the magic word is, I'm not going to. This is as deep as we're going to get into this. Well, if you think this is what epsilon delta was, then you missed some points with epsilon delta. Because this is nowhere near as detailed as that was. Um, so what I do now is I take natural log of x plus 1, minus 0.001, Put my function in the middle there, and then the other wall plus point oh oh one. All right, I got some weird window. So if we do a standard window, we're not going to see everything we need to. All right. So see that there it is. And, and why I don't know if you guys caught it, but you could actually sort of see when it drew the other ln. But how close are those two LNs to each other? They're very, 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 very 
0 0.0002. Yeah, so what we do is we do my favorite thing. And we built it around a point zero, right? So I'm going to zoom in where everything's happening near zero. So I'm going to zoom in to zero. I don't think I got to zoom in. I'm going to zoom box. It's my favorite. Hmm. Let's see what happens. So there I am, really, really close to zero. So there's the lower piece. If I remember correctly, there comes that. All right, now I can see better where things are happening a little bit. The other piece is so damn close. Yeah, because our tolerance is so small. So I got to keep zooming in. So if I zoom in one more time, hopefully that'll be enough. What I'm looking for, well, let's see. Let's see if I can see it, and then I'll see if you guys say something. Let's see if that's good enough. Oh, I might have gone too far on one side. Let's see what's good here. So there's the lower bound. There's the minus 0.01. Here comes my approximation. And there's the upper bound. Oh, yeah. we got to zoom in some more. So hold on. Just stay with me. So we're looking for when it's a perfect line? We're looking for when my approximation is not between those two. And again, I did too far on the other one, but let's see if that's all right. Maybe I, I can at least see one side of this. All right, there's the bottom one. There's my approximation. Oh, yeah, this is yummy. It's so dim. Oh, wow. The point oh one was not a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, let's see. Do I want to keep fudging that? Stay with me. Let's change it. Let's make this a little less strict. If we make this a little less strict, we can find it a little bit quicker. Not probably. Let's see. I'm probably way too far. Well, no. There's the lower. Okay, good. There's my approximation. There's the upper one. And now I've got to zoom out a little bit. It's all right. Let's just try to zoom out. Let's see what happens. Pretty much right. Go up here. So what I see is I see my approximation and I see this meet it, it intersects right here. So let me let me get a little bit closer in there. Right, let's just focus on this side of it. Hmm. They should have programmed it so you could click on the thing. Yeah, that would be nice for the computer. And there it hits and it goes out. And it's going to do the same thing on the other side. So our approximation starts to be good enough where it first hits. Because this is the error tolerance. I want my approximation to be at most this far away. Where's my actual natural log function up here? Where, I didn't graph it, but where would it be? In between, the exactly in between those two, because this is minus 0.01 now, this is plus 0.01, so the actual thing is in here. I want my approximation to be this close. It can't go further away. So here it's further away, isn't it? it's too far away, so I can't count this as an x value where the approximation is good enough as far as my error tolerance. But the minute it enters into here, so I want to see where it intersects here, that's the first x value where it's good enough, where the output is, is within the tolerated error. And then I can do that on the other side too. It's going to exit again somewhere on the other side. 
you guys settle with me. So if you had a, a we have better a range where it's okay. Second. We have that range where it's okay, where yeah. it stays within those variables. So if I have a, a lower bound of something, an approximation, and an upper bound of something, just over pronouncing what's actually happening up here. I gotta figure out what x value this is, because that's where my approximation is good enough. I really want you guys to understand. Because this this is always point whatever away from the real value, and this is always pointed whatever way on the other side of the real value. So I want my approximation to be within those two. So that's when it starts to be too bad up here, and that's when it starts to be too bad down there. So I've got to say between this and this, wherever they intersect, that would be my values of x I'm allowed to use. So when I plugged in point 0.1 here, we were within 0.005. So if that was my error tolerance, this would actually be in the acceptable range of x values I could use. So all you got to do is keep, you know, hopefully the functions they give you will be a little bit nicer than the ones I'm picking. But that's all you have to do is find out where they intersect with one side or the other. They're going to intersect with one side or the other. Bless you. Um, And they give you a decent picture on page 252 in the book. Oops. And the other part of this section is, let me go back to what I was talking about earlier. Um, this idea, if I had y equals f of x, dy equals f prime of x dx, this is that differential we were talking about earlier. What I might slip up sometimes and call the total derivative, because I'm thinking about differential equations. Right, so that's in symbols what we were doing earlier. If I have some function of x and I take dy equals f prime x dx, because whenever I take a derivative with an x in it, it's, I'm going to have to put a dx on it. All right, so on one level, this seems almost silly, because we know from before dy dx is f prime, and all I'm doing is multiplying a dx up. But just to remind you guys, I'm not really doing that. It just looks like I am, which is useful. Okay, cool. So what some of these problems in the homework are going to do, they're going to give you something like, oh, let's see. Here's cool. They give you y equals cosine pi x. And they say... Find the differential dy. And then evaluate dy. For the given values of x and dx. So let's see what this means. So they give me, uh, for this one, x is one third. And dx is negative 0.02. So this is sort of related to section 3.9 because they say at the point when x is one third, if x changes by this much, how much will y change by? Doesn't that sound like related rates? This is not related rates because it's not time dependent at all. It's more general than that. But this, this is actually really nice. What would the dy, what is dy from this? What is dy? All right, so negative sine, so negative pi sine pi x, dx. So then you just got to plug in, so that's part A. Part B says, all right, what is dy when x is one third? And dx is negative 0.02, and I just got to figure out what that is. If I give you on a test or a quiz, an actual angle that you should know. I don't want to see freaking decimals. I want to see the actual value. Are you with me? And so now, uh, what is sine pi over three? Right. Yeah, good. Rad three over two. So I get negative. Well, the negatives cancel. So I get rad three pi over two times 0 0.02. And this is two tenths, two hundred. Sorry. So now it's rad three pi over a hundred. Is a two, we cancel with that. You get your over 100, bam. That's what I would want to see. Wait, where 
Where did you get oh, the pile of the three? They got to give me this. Okay. So they give you those. So they say, first figure out what dy is. And then at a point when x is one third and dx is negative 0.02. So you're at the point one third and you're going to allow the x to change by 0.02. How much would I predict that the y would change by? So is that the point where you're allowed to use that? Totally, because you've already taken a derivative, and now you're curious about at a specific point what's going on. I like it, so don't, yeah, don't plug it in too early, because then you get a bunch of zeros. Doesn't do you any good. I like it. So this section, if you, this section is kind of building on stuff we knew from before. All right, how are we doing there? We cool that? It's really not going to get much more difficult than that. Uh, I don't know if you've tried the homework yet. But try it out, you'll see if I'm talking about the truth. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about 311. Um, and I, I've got to find, a, I had found once a nice animation for this. There are some pictures on Google Images if you look at them. But the same way that, uh, what are uh, sine and cosine, what are those all based off of? <clears throat> yeah, but uh, so what's trig based on? Unit, unit circle. I love it. So why do you think we might call these functions hyperbolic functions? They're somehow based off of a hyperbola. There you go. Right. Some kind of unit hyperbola. Right. So for a circle, we call sine to be the x piece at some angle. Uh, the y piece. Sorry. So the sine is going to be how long that y piece at some given angle. So the interesting thing is for hyperbolic functions, it actually has to do with a given area. So at some area, so I can even draw this correctly. Uh, don't try it, Jeff. It's been too. Um, let me show you. some given area, so my inputs are actually sort of related to the areas inside of a hyperbolic curve at some point. So this is really freaky. I just, I, you're not going to have to do any math related to this. I just want you to kind of get an idea of what hyperbolic functions are based on. It's really kind of cool. You could actually develop an entire range of trig functions based off of the unit square and call them whatever the hell you want to. Square trigonometric functions. And people have done it and graph what they look like. And you can choose your own image, your triangle or something, whatever you want to do. It's kind of nifty. Well, um, so on, uh, tomorrow we'll finish out section 311. I'll have the practice test. Monday is going to be review day. And if you weren't here before, Tuesday is part one of the test, and then Wednesday is part two. Yay. Is there the same Oh, 7103. It's in the tech mall. Yeah, in the tech mall. Oh, thank Everything else around you. No. Wow. Like, I guess, yeah, so I'm not here.